It's tips and tricks time. Let's go out into the real world and shoot some photos. But more specifically, let's uh, do a comparison between a Fuji wide format and a Polaroid format uh, in some semi-extreme conditions. Roll that intro. You know the type of guy that was a jock in high school but ended up becoming a huge nerd? You know, someone that's not afraid to make a fool of themselves on the internet. And someone that likes to shoot Polaroid a little too much. Did I say huge nerd? You know, just an ordinary, everyday guy. Well, that's me. I'm just another Chris. So, I about to do something I haven't done before. Uh, don't mind that future video on that coming soon. I have an excessive amount of iType film and I don't shoot iType very often. So I thought since it's snowing, I'd shoot some iType in snow. Make sure the door is not locked because I don't have keys. It's really chilly. Obviously it's snowing. Since I haven't shot in the snow before, everyone says, oh, we're supposed to keep the film warm when it develops, don't shoot in snow. Well, let's see if they're right. I screwed that one up. Yeah, I know I did. This is difficult. I don't have where to set the camera down to put this in my pocket. I did not think this through. So my plan is I'm going to shoot some Polaroid first, and then I'm going to shoot some Fuji uh, Instax wide film. Oh man, this is really difficult to shoot in snow. It's, everything's overexposed or super underexposed. <laughs> it's weird. I'm super hot, but I'm also super cold at the same time. Didn't even know that was possible. Yeah, that was my last photo in the pack. I'm about to put in a new pack of film in the snow. This is not ideal. And I'm gonna do Star Wars, pretend we're on Hoth. Uh, this one was also swapped out. So I have three left on this one. If you guys wanna see how to swap out photos, I've already done a video and that is up on Patreon or uh, on the YouTube membership side of it. So yeah, if you're interested, consider checking it out. Link is in the description. And we are good to go. <laughs> it's cold. It's so cold. Remember when I said I was hot and cold at the same time? I'm just cold now. I'm over that. Let's shoot a couple photos real fast and get back inside before I come out and shoot the Fuji wide stuff. It's so cold. Dead inside. Hopefully I'm like, it's hard to see the screen. Hopefully I've been recording this whole time. That'd be really frustrating if it's not. Okay, I think I'm in focus. I got one picture left. What should I take? Hey, maybe I'll just take a picture. I'll take a selfie. Let's do that. Let's do a selfie. It's cold. Let's go inside and get the Fuji and come back out. The things I do for you guys. <laughs> just kidding. This is actually pretty fun. I'm, I'm curious to see how the photos actually turn out. Because in the snow, I mean, I've never done it in this extreme cold weather before. I've never shot instant photography. So I'm curious to see what actually happens. But I'm also like miserable right now. <laughs> the life of a YouTuber, I suppose. It's cold. <laughs> it's so cold. Um, let's uh, take a look at some photos before we head on out and use the Fuji camera, shall we? Because uh, I got a few of them here and it looks like they're all finished developing. You can't see him, but Paco's down here really sniffing me out. He really wants to get my hat. He thinks it's a toy. It's not a toy. For those that don't know, Paco's my dog. It's Paco the Taco. I think I take this off now. Let's make sure he doesn't get it. So like I said, I haven't shot with an iType camera in a long time. I've uh, been using the SLR cameras and I don't like flash. I'm just not a flash guy. I don't like going around flashing people. Probably a good thing. It's kept me out of trouble, you know what I'm saying? So I forgot to turn the flash off on this camera when I went out and shot the first photo, but I'm not even, not even hating on it. I was able to actually capture the snow coming down by accident. Kind of crazy. But there is one common thread for, for all these photos, and that's the fact that there is a clear uh, hue to each one of them, and that's, well, because it was cold out and I had it developed in my pocket. I thought the warmth enough from my chesty area would keep the photos nice and toasty and develop fine. Uh, they didn't. However, I'm not really too disappointed. I think they came out really cool okay it landed a unique look to these they look really faded and just like old like vintage especially the star wars 
ones, like the dead end one. It's just super fitting for what the photo is. It's like got this nice little vibe to it. I really like it. But there is one thing that I did as an experiment. The One Step Plus, I have yet to do a review on either one of these cameras actually, and uh, I need to do it soon, especially on this one. I've teased it enough. It's coming soon. But the One Step Plus, uh, a lot of people don't know this. You can connect this to your phone and turn it into a manual camera. But there's an extra cool feature that it has is you have the ability to eject the picture after you take it or you can turn that feature off. So it got me thinking, what if I took a picture outside, don't eject the photo, bring it back inside, let the camera warm up back to you know room temperature, then eject it. Would it have similar results? And it totally, totally worked how I thought it would. Took a little selfie pic, and it looks as if it would have been a normal shot. It came out pretty good. I like it. I'm gonna be doing a more in-depth review of this and hacks with it as well to use some of these cool features to your benefit, and that will be coming too. Hey guys, so real quick, one of the extra challenges of shooting in the snow is look at look at the highlights. Look how overexposed it is. What you have to do is underexpose your shots because the snow. <laughs> is super bright something to keep in mind uh but yeah i'm i'm not hating on all these pictures i'm actually kind of liking them especially the star wars ones those came out super good i just love that feel of just vintage makes you feel like you're actually in the blizzard it just adds that unique cool effect i like it and it's all inside the camera so anyway those are those photos let's uh take the fuji out and see what we can do with that camera. See if it gets similar results or will it outdo the Polaroid? You have to find like a downside to Fujifilm. That stuff is bulletproof. I've done three plus year expired film. If anything, it looked better than the current film does. It's crazy. Uh, and I've shot it in hot temperatures. It's been fine. Let's find out if we can shoot it in cold weather and it, see how it comes out. Who knows? Well, let's go and find out, shall we? Let's roll. Got the Fuji Wide 200. I, can't, I haven't teased and review on this camera for a very long time. Easily a year almost. The plan is to kind of re uh, recreate the photos I just took, kind of, and compare and do a side by side, see how they turn out. I need gloves. Because holding this selfie stick, using the switch pod, it's metal. And it. It really hurts the hands. <laughs> I have no idea what this car is. It's like an RV or something. It looks good on camera though. You have to be super careful while walking because the snow is covering up all the dangerous bits like curbs. I almost died like three times coming across this curb, not seeing it from the other side. <laughs> okay, I think I got all the shots I need and heading back. I will say, the nice thing about shooting Fuji, you get 10 pictures instead of eight, and it really makes a huge difference. You wouldn't think just two pictures more, but it totally does. However, there's pros and cons to everything. But oh my gosh, let's get back in the studio. It's freaking cold. Ooh. Okay, so yeah, as expected, the photos turned out way more clear, way more accurate to real life. Uh, the Polaroid ones, which are over here, they don't necessarily look like they do if you were to look out the window. They do have like a filter or an effect applied over the top of them. That's not what's actually happening, it's just because of the temperature it changed everything. The Fuji, <laughs> let's compare them, shall we? So like I was saying, I was trying to do like a side-by-side -side comparison. So the photos are not from the same positions, they're just of the same thing. So let's just dive in and take a quick look. First things first I'm noticing in these photos, color. Uh, I'm seeing color. The other photos are more of like a faded colors and kind of just muted. But Fuji, looking really good. There's no comparison in the effect of one being better than the other as far as clarity and color and saturation. Look at that. That is sharp and the vivid yellow. That's amazing. So this one is kind of exactly in the same spot. And obviously it's wider because, you know, it's Fuji wide. It's a wider shot and wider film. However, you can kind of see what I'm talking about as far as vivid colors. Look at that RV, bus, car thing. I don't really even know what that is. 
still. It's pretty awesome though. It uh, stands out of the whole image. You can tell that it's like a lime green color. And in the Polaroid, it kind of stands out, but not, not much. Uh, so it's another win for Fuji, I guess, if this is in competition. Also take a look at the recycling bins. You can definitely see the blue way more prominent in the Fuji uh, picture than you can in the Polaroid. Still, I, I mean, if I had to pick one photo, I still think I like the, the Polaroid a lot more. It makes you feel like you're there. So comparing the two selfies, however, Still preferring the Polaroid, I gotta say. Uh, but this was just the picture that I had developed indoors and you know, room temperature. The Fuji one was developed outside and then put into my pocket. And that, that did just fine as it normally would, but I still prefer the Polaroid. Yeah. Now enough of the comparison. Let's just take a quick look at the photos themselves for what they are. Did they come out amazing? Hex, yeah. I'm totally and thoroughly uh, um, happy with his photos. Uh, they are crisp, clean, just super nice. Um, they developed without a crazy hue and like color effect over them, like uh, people have been saying that you get when you shoot into photography outside. It must only apply to Polaroid in general, because that I did see a massive problem, I guess if you want to call it, but uh, it's just, again, all in the eye of the beholder there. I think the Fuji, whatever they got inside their magic developer pods, just handle extreme conditions so much better. I It blows me away every single time. So for kicks, what I did was I shot some photos outside my window. So the photos were never outside. They'd only been exposed to room temperature and not, nothing else. And this is what we got. And my, oh my, <laughs> uh, they are amazing. I just think are so cool. This stuff just handles really well. I even was shooting this photo kind of into the sun, uh, not directly, but pretty close. And it's still, came out uh, beautiful. If you're ever thinking to yourself, well, maybe should I, should I get into Fujifilm? Should I, should I pick up a pack and try it? Yes, please try it for yourself. You will be blown away with the results that you're gonna get out of this thing. I mean, I, as you guys know, I tend to lean more towards Polaroid, uh, but every time I pull out one of these Fujis, man, man, I'm blown away every time. It makes me wanna shoot more and more. Plus it's just cheaper and you get more photos. But I digress. So what did we learn today? Well. Uh, we learned a bunch of stuff. Well, we learned that Fujifilm is amazing, as usual, and you can shoot that baby in cold, extreme weather, and you'll be just fine. Secondly, people were writing about the Polaroid being temperamental in cold weather. Uh, but yet, I think the effects that I got out of them kind of warrant going out shooting in the cold. You get some kind of cool photos. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful in any way. Uh, if you guys want to see more content like this, consider subscribing. I got a lot more fun tips, tricks, hack videos. Yeah, hack videos coming soon. Such as adding cool lenses to your cameras and also like 3D printing, uh, you just creative ways to use Polaroid and instant photography cameras in general, just more creatively. That's what me really it. So be on the lookout for that. If you wanna see those videos, consider subscribing because they are coming soon. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Now, get out there, make some art.